All right, you see in T120, we're working on Chapter 4. We're now looking at this section on UDP. We just talked TCP uh, for reliable data transport. We're now going to talk about UDP. UDP, again, is at the transport layer. And when I don't need that reliability, because really, TCP is going to add a lot of overhead doing all this, hey, here it comes, did you get it? Doing all that double checking, it's going to add a lot of overhead. So when I don't need that much when I need speed more than that overhead, I'm going to use UDP or UDP is going to get used. So it's not going to do error checking or sequencing. It's a lot more efficient than TCP. So this becomes useful for things like audio video transmissions over the internet. If I lose a couple frames, if I lose a couple packets, eh, big deal. What's more important is the efficiency of getting that there quickly. I need to get the information there quickly. So, um, and actually, yeah, this is one of those I'm, I'm looking for the speed, commonly used for voice and video, less overhead. Absolutely. This is going to commonly get used with certain protocols and or certain applications. If you remember before we looked at TCP and when it gets used, here are some examples of when UDP gets used. And I'm giving you examples of things like DNS, SNMP, time, NTP, RIP routing protocol, voice video, that sort of thing. Here are some times when UDP gets used. Again, I don't have a choice. It's doing it for me. It's doing it by default. So a UDP header only contains a couple fields. We don't need much for it to just get there. We basically need the addressing fields. That's it. So here's the source port, destination port, and I'm pretty much done. Okay, much less overhead, much less worry because I'm going to slap an address on it, send it out the door, and hope it gets there. That's what it kind of amounts to. So if I take a look at UDP, well, I left my my Wireshark open from the last one where I looked at the three three way handshake. Okay, there's my TCP three-way handshake. Well, I'm going to get rid of that filter, the same packet cache, I'm going to get rid of this filter, and I'm going to go back and I'm going to search for my DNS. And I actually looked for, I, um, I was searching for IMSA.com. So let me see if I can find that again in here in my little pile. Here's my IMSA.com, excellent. I want to follow this UDP stream. That should make a little more sense now. Earlier, it might not have made so much sense. Here's my DNS query going to the DNS server. Here's the DNS response coming back. If I look at the query and open the header, okay, here's the DNS query. I'm asking for imsa.com. Do you know the address of? I'm going to close the DNS header and look at this. There's my UDP header. Source port is coming from my browser. 53 is going to the DNS server. And that's it. There's like nothing else there. Nice small header. And if I look at the response coming back from the server, source port 53, that's the server, destination port 52997, that's coming to my browser. Okay, it's coming to my browser, that tab of my browser, if you will. Okay, that's it for my UDP header. Nice and small, nice and streamlined for this efficient sending of data. And if I lose a couple little, you know, frames of video or voice, eh, it's not a big deal, but I need to get it there quickly. That's where UDP comes in. It's this unreliable data transport, but it gets it there. And there's UDP.